I know you reached out to me to talk a little bit about some of the things you want to overcome and some of the things you want to be able to achieve, but I want to start this off by just talking about what's been going really well. Who are you becoming? Because I see some changes in you, but tell me a little bit about where have you come from to now and how do you, what's your identity look like now compared to where you were and now where you are? Why don't you tell me that first? Oh, goodness. Let's see. So we talked in the middle of the pandemic, like we met, and, and that was uh, quite a time for me, as you know, and I've shared my story with many people. And it's interesting how that transition and that period of time could be seen as a great adversity. Oh. Alarms are going off just a second. Let me take, turn a few things off on my phone here. That's all right. On my computer, that's usually not an issue. <laughs> Let's see, make sure these are off. There we go. Okay. No more interruptions. Okay, there's real life. There's being resilient. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so let me start over with that so you can have it better. Or if yeah. you want to ask me again, because that kind of messed it up. So. <laughs> Right, so yeah, let's, let's start at the beginning. We want to we want to talk about who you are becoming, the journey you've been on. So, what was you know? You, I know you, you were telling me before we went on air here that you were telling me about you know what, what was happening when we first met and now where you are. So why don't you jump in there when we first met to what's where you are right now? So we met during the pandemic. We crossed paths, and for me, what was interesting is I was posting things online that were very positive just to help myself. And as I was doing that, I got mistaken as a coach several times. <laughs> and at first I blew it off. And then at what happened, like the 12th time, I'm like, okay, okay, I, this must be calling to me. And then I ran into people like you and um, got into the circle of personal development and, and growth day and started to see this whole world of people who are doing this as a living, as a calling, as a, a way of life. And the other thing that appealed to it for me was you're in control of your schedule. And now as a single mom of three, I was looking for ways to be available to my kids uh, and my backgrounds in theater and performing. And what I used to love about that is I got to perform and touch people's lives. But it was kind of this one-way conversation in this one moment, this one instance, whereas coaching is developing a relationship, it's going deeper and it really impacts lives on a deeper level. So it still fits what my original heart was on, but now it's more of this authentic self I have to step into, not just the performer. And so that's been a beautiful self-discovery as well, because as you do this work in personal development, as you become a life coach and you step into that, you learn all these tools that help you develop as a person as well, because you got to practice what you preach. And so that's part of what my journey has been. And I've really, uh, it's been interesting as I've been nicknamed the resilient mother and resilience has kind of become my thing. And it's interesting because I think you have to be careful what you name yourself because then you get more of it. <laughs> and so I feel like I'm constantly developing that now. And, but it's this beautiful journey as I'm developing a book and my own programs and the things that I do, because every time something happens, I look at, okay, what can I learn from this? How does this help enhance my study of resilience and how I can help others step into it? Cool. And I love that you talk about the theme. So really powerful for single moms who've got one, two, three, four, uh, you know, some, some single moms, four, five, six kids, right? And so with that too. So single parents, let's talk to single parents. I think that's a, an important distinction. And that, yeah, I can imagine being a single parent in COVID was pretty yeah. tricky. So yet yeah, resilience, what a key theme. And that's wonderful that it's come out for you. So let's talk about resilience. What does resilience mean to you? So that I can connect with somebody who might be seeing this. Yeah, uh, resilience means something different to everyone, but my personal definition of it is it's finding the best of yourself, stepping into it and being able to maintain it under all circumstances. And for me, that's real resilience, not necessarily the drive and push through everything and, and burn out and still accomplish something. It's, it's maintaining your best self and having a good experience along the way and taking what you have to work with and making the most of it and also knowing what to let go and what to keep and as a single parent that's probably the key thing that i had to learn is now being all roles like what is essential what are the essential what are the non-negotiables what is the priority and really having to focus my time in a correct way in order to get the results that i want not just for me but for my family I love that. That's good. So that's powerful about resilience that 
not about drive and force and pushing through and staying the course, more about being your best self, consistently focusing on the things that matter most so that you can get the, the biggest reward for you, but more importantly, for the people outside of you. So I want to ask that next. We heard about your three kids. Yeah. Why do you do what you do now? So you, you told us this journey of where you came, but what's your mission that's bigger than you? You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Because I know I'm not the only person that's a single parent out there that's trying to navigate this new world and wants to be available to their kids. I run into mompreneurs all the time and they had this drive, this love for their children that they didn't expect to motivate them to make a shift or change or something during COVID maybe moved them out of being a music major and they needed another option. But the most important distinction that I found as a single parent and this came from the head of um, Gab Wireless. I was in a Zoom with him and I asked him, what's the best advice you could give to a single parent going back into the workforce as I'm looking at that versus my own business and balancing both, creating stability. And what I yeah. didn't know is he was raised by a single parent and he has a real heart for it. And he said, don't apologize. When you go out there, don't apologize for the fact that you are working like four jobs, raising kids, doing your thing, all of the roles that you fulfill, use that as your strength. Say, hey, I can be very resourceful. I can manage four people's schedule. I can, instead of seeing anything as a single parent, as a deficit or as a reason that you're not enough or that you're not a value in the workforce or in whatever that you do. Awesome. Is there, is there something you're aiming for, like a, a mission in life? So we've got three kids. You're talking about how it's important not to live to a standard that's well believe, beneath you. But is there, is there something that's bigger than you? Something that maybe in these single parents, particularly single mothers, is there something that you want to be able to achieve that you could say, that's the destiny for me, or that's the direction I'm heading in? What's that? I really want to show my kids anything is possible, that it's important to pursue your dreams and fulfill them. But not just my kids, I want other mothers to see that. I love when I'm able to help another single mom. I've helped a couple through divorces and one still going through a lot and reaches out to me. The other got through a divorce in 12 weeks and remarried this year and is doing very, very well. And it's so exciting to see those results for other people. But I struggled for years. I mean, I lost probably my entire 20s to mental illness and I would never wish that on anyone else. And so much of it had to do with shame or guilt for being different or going through trauma or going through things. Now, I'm not a counselor. I don't like dwelling on those things. However, I do enjoy the process of personal development and moving someone forward. Now, if those things come up, I'll hold space for it and I'll honor it. And I had a beautiful experience recently with a dear friend who just needed someone who could understand and I love that I've been given the gift through all my trials and everything that I've been through to be someone that says, I've been there. I felt that not just, okay, we're going to go do this theory of this book that says that you should do this. I'll be like, no, I've been where you're at. And here's what I did about it. Here's some options for you. Let's figure out what works for you as an individual. But I see myself someday sharing my story on stages and just letting people know that Everything that happens to you happens for a reason. And people are waiting for you to step into who you are. They're yeah. waiting for you to do your part and to do your message and fulfill your destiny because then it's going to give them permission to do the same. And, and that's what's calling on my heart right now is just not the coaching, but just sharing those struggles so that people understand they're not alone in their struggles as a single parent, as a divorcee, as someone who's gone through bankruptcy, someone who struggles with mental illness or trauma. Like, we're human people. We go through these things and we can become better and more resilient because of it. I love this. This is so, so, so powerful. You and I share a coach, a mentor is on the back of your shelf there, Brendan. I see his book, High Performance Habits. One thing Brendan talks about is that there's a two-sided coin of life. And you talked a lot about that there. And the one side of that coin is the struggle. And it's going to be a struggle. And actually, I think a lot of our struggles are all preparation for more struggles. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> life is hard. You know, it's, the struggles aren't going to go away. So we have to be prepared for that. The other side of that coin, which is the beauty in all of this, is that there is joy on the other side of that coin. And so when we do what we love, when we can serve others and you can do some of the things around being the resilient mother and teaching those single moms that so they can step forward. Yes, the world is waiting because the joy comes when you realize two things. 
the most exciting days in your life with the day you were born and the day you realize why. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so true. Then you also talked in there so eloquently about the past and the shame and the guilt that we carry. And we tend to put it on a backpack and we just walk around with it. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody's got a backpack. Yeah, but some people just put it down. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. sooner you put that down the better so you can step forward to realize why you're here and there are lots of people waiting on you you to do this and then you know it's like the, the flip of that coin is the future and the people who are anxious and worried and fearful are all thinking about the future they're worried about the future so it's coming back into the here and now and stepping forward into our best selves i think this is really powerful stuff so look let's get into the nitty-gritty there's people watching you now and going how do i work with you what are you selling? Tell us a little bit about what do you sell and who who is the best client who's going to get the greatest results working with you? So I recently became a certified high performance coach through Brendan because awesome. I needed a system that I knew was backed by science, that was studied, that was getting people results. And everything that I see Brendan do was helping me improve and was helping me to become more of who I wanted to be. And so as a high performance coach, I am able to take what, uh, well, what, what appealed to me first is I'm in COVID. All of a sudden I've got three kids, right? And I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this by myself? And then I saw this thing, high performance habits. And I'm like, well, that should help me do this. <laughs> And that's how I got into that. And that's why I decided to be a high performance coach. Also, it's very positive and it's all about moving forward. It's not um, about triggers. It's not about pain points. It's about being in the present here and now, like you were just talking about. And how do I work with what I have right now in this moment, what I have control of and let go of those other things that don't serve you so that you can be the most productive moving forward. For me, I seem to attract the people that are looking for inner deep work I'll take you deep and I will hold you in that space comfortably in my training in my first session it was amazing I had a woman who is an entrepreneur and we were doing our session and as we went through I saw that she wasn't really congruent with who she was talking about in her past present and future they were very disjointed And there were some comparisons of who I should be from corporate versus who I should be now as an entrepreneur and just some things that didn't connect. And I finally said to her, um, let's, let's close our eyes and let's look at our future self. And she couldn't see her. It was a shocking moment of I, she couldn't see her. So I was like, can you hear her? Yes, I can hear her. And here's the beautiful thing. So I go to Growth Day Live. I meet her in person and she's on fire. She is full of energy. She's so positive. It was the breakthrough she was looking for. And she came to me and she said, I see her now. And this is what she's doing. And this is what she's accomplishing. And for me, that was the best moment of why I want to be a coach is I knew I was meant for more. I knew I didn't need to hold back as a single parent or from the things that I went through. It's for, I'm for the person that just wants that next level of self-awareness that lets you step into who you want to be and just own it authentically and resiliently step into your identity resiliently. So you can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. And I do tend to work with women. I've worked with a few men as well. And, but definitely my experience and my expertise is how to balance a lot of things as as a single parent or as someone who just has a background with a lot of things that pop up that uh, maybe triggers or maybe um, you get stuck somewhere and you're not quite sure why somehow I'm able to help people kind of go a little deeper and figure out what that next level of unlocking them or what that block is and so that that's who I would like to work with and to help them step into who they are. So, we, you know, that could be a broad market or a narrow market, but I want to yeah. recap so people hear from me, my description, my version of that. So if you're watching this and you're loving what Tiffany's putting down, it is up. It is up incumbent upon you now as the single parent, as the single mother, to start thinking about, am I going to go on this journey alone? And I'm a big advocate, and Brendan has been a big part of my life. In fact, Tiffany and I met first face-to-face for the first time in December last year. Yeah. Wonderful experience to actually see each other because through COVID, we've just been virtual the whole time. 
And so we got a chance to hang out there. And, and if you're going in September to the next event, then we'll see each other in September too. But I, I think this is critical. I, I think everyone needs a coach in their corner. And whether that's a physical coach or a mental health coach, stroke therapist, I, I do think that's a vital part for you just to keep your feet on the ground. And, and uh, that physical coach, by the way, could do all kinds of things. They could be a sleep coach. They could be a gym coach, you know, health and fitness. Uh, but there could be all kinds of things around your health to, uh, to take care of. Uh, but the last one is this career mission quest coach. And, and you're across all three. So you've got a foot in all of those places. But it sounds like to me, if someone's got a block mentally around a passion or a mission and a purpose that you're the person who's going to help them, you know, you're going to give the inquisitive question that's looking forward to define a future self and what's going on in the identity right now is going to help people just move into that place. Is that about right for the kind of person you're looking for? Yeah. I mean, that's been my experience so far. Yes. Yeah. And let's narrow it even further because I want to talk to some very specific people. What's the youngest person you're coaching and what's the oldest person you coach right now? Uh, so the youngest person I've worked with is probably in their 30s and the oldest I've worked with is in their 60s. So Yeah, and that's my market too. 35 to 65, I find are the people carrying the most amount of heavy bags. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, and, and we just, our job is just to kind of unload that a bit, line that up a bit, but then also give people some direction. Yeah, and I, I think that's good. Awesome. So now we know who your market is. Now we know what you're selling. Oh, by the way, I want to congratulate you for choosing a science-backed approach. I want to congratulate you for becoming a certified high-performance coach because now you've got curriculum-based coaching. And I believe, as somebody who does this too, having a curriculum that people can follow that develops them foundationally, like mathematics, in math, you got to learn the numbers. Then you got to do addition. Then you do subtraction. You don't start doing quadratics <laughs> and other things at the beginning. You got to build the foundation. So I love that having a curriculum in science back is going to be a much better way for people to get results faster. And no doubt, you're giving people fast results and things that they can see, you know, tangibly immediately because they can start to see whether it's a habit or whether they can start to see, start to feel some intangible benefit as well of just being closer to somebody who's already walked on ahead. I think that's wonderful too. All right, now we're going to keep going, nitty gritty. So now we know what you're selling. How are you doing it? So let's talk about business. How do you do marketing sales? What does it look like for you? Is it organic? Are you doing paid activity? Tell me a little bit about your business and how that works. And I oh. to now jump in and start talking about how do we get that revved up? So uh, being a resourceful person, I, I stick to as much I don't have to pay for as possible. Now, That's there's some pros and cons yeah. to that because I sometimes do really well with my social media stuff and my emails, and sometimes I don't do so well. And so I find that um, I'm a great person. Once I get people in front of me, I'm great to work with. Getting them there is tricky. And I have no background in sales, and I don't like the word sales. I want to add value to people and changing that dialogue even just within myself and how that looks. And then I've got lots of different marketing curriculum that I've either been gifted or I've been using or I've been following different people and it's worked for them. And I would say I haven't found what works for me quite yet. And some of that is the tech side of it. Like I would love to hire a VA. I will go follow someone's process, but I might miss one thing in Kajabi of one step, or I might miss something over here, or I might get someone into a conversation and not know where to go with it. And that's just lack of experience and some tech kind of things. So I've, it's not that I haven't been able to get attention and kind of say, hey, I'm a coach. It's getting them through the whole customer journey that I haven't quite gotten. And so I, I feel like I'm a good coach and I have the right idea. Entrepreneur-wise, yeah. I have some work to do. <laughs> Great. It's, it's, it's perfect. And that's why I think we jumped on the call today. So I can help you with a coaching. We can record this. We can share it for other people. So that this is typically the model. Most people are expert at something. And I don't question your delivery because the way we started this call was deliberate for the first 15 to 20 minutes. You talk wonderfully about your story and how that story allows you to step into your best self, how that allows you to be confident in and help women specifically who are on the path, on the journey somewhere, who just need to learn a little bit more about how they can unblock their path and you're the person. So, but then in business, look, not everybody's out there who's a coach making millions of dollars. You know, most coaches are earning less than $5,000 a month. And so what our role is, is to, to figure out how can we monetize it so that we're earning consistently five, 10, 15 and more, you know, because 
my best months are in the fifty, sixty thousand dollars. That's always enjoyable. But I, I like you, like me, it's not always about the money. It's more about the personal impact and the contribution we can make to other people. And you kind of described it with your lady when you met her at growth day and saying the look on her face, right? And that she stepped into this best version. That's so good. There's more, there's no greater feeling for us when we see that. So that's Absolutely. great. So don't, uh, let me think about the way I phrase this more. Yeah, never worry about our sales and marketing. Nobody is perfect. Even Brendan isn't getting sales and marketing mapped out. Even Look, at we're talking about Walmart. Walmart are still dialing in their message. When you go into Walmart, you don't think that there's something there to attract you. They are purposely studying data. They've got, they got data science running and AI running to figure out when you walk through the door, how are they going to get you to spend the most amount of money? And our business is the same. Our sales and marketing practices, we just have to get better and better and better and better, like mathematics, like coaching. And so it's not uncommon to come across coaches. And I'm the same. You know, I, I think I'm pretty handy coach, not the best in the world, but am I perfecting the art? Yeah, I'm perfecting the art. And so what we do need to do is have a sales process. But prior to that, we do need to have some, what Dan Kennedy would call magnetic marketing to have people mm. come to us. And so tell me, tell me a little bit about where you market. So you said you do emailing and, and I, I'm on your email list, so I get that. And then tell <laughs> me about your primary channel. Where do you work in social media where you're seeing the most amount of response to you? So Facebook's definitely where I'm getting the most response. I did have a great Instagram account going, but it got compromised and I had to start a new one. So I'm rebuilding all over again. I'm making some more progress there as I'm learning the new algorithms and things are changing because things have been a little wonky over there. But I really see myself moving to LinkedIn. And that is an area I haven't explored before, but I'm finding people are more professional over there. There's a lot more guards around um, fraud and scams that could be thrown at you. And so I, I'm, I'm transitioning over there a little bit, but whatever I do over there, I really want to be very professional. So I kind of am testing it out on my social media first and something that does well or something I want to promote on LinkedIn, like my podcast yeah. where I find better speakers. I'm taking over there. So that's uh, that's a new area that I haven't thought to approach before. And over there is really my market, more of the, the business entrepreneur mom, CEOs that are looking for these kind of breakthroughs and balancing their mother work life and those right. kind of things. So I think uh, I will have more success over there once I understand how to work that. But I do think it comes back to having a good email sequence. It comes back to having a coach. It also has to be open to just I'm willing at this point to try more things. And I figure I've tried all these other things. They haven't worked. So I've got to be closer to what will work. <laughs> so. I was listening to the fabulous David Meltzer this morning. Most entrepreneurs don't realize that they're failing. <laughs> so they just mark, they look at the bank account or that I call it the scorecard. The scorecard is the bank account. You look at the bank account. Oh, there's no money in the bank account. I'm failing. But they don't actually realize is what you're describing is test, 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 mm -hmm. test. And so you tested successfully in Facebook. So that's great. So we can talk a little bit about that. Instagram, it was going and then it slowed down when you were compromised. H here's my advice. If oh, Let me ask you two questions before I give you that, because I think there's some coaching hat stuff I can dive straight into. Uh, is your revenue inconsistent or consistent? Oh, inconsistent. Inconsistent. Is it above where you're expecting or below where you're expecting? Below. <laughs> so, and a lot of coaches watching this and a lot of people trying to build their businesses, look, looking, whether they're single moms or they're, you know, at home dads, that's kind of my thing. I only work a few hours every day because I want to be at home with my kids. So I don't want to do anything else. Um, if you're watching this and you're, you're, you fit that model and you're inconsistent revenue and you are finding it difficult to get the revenue where you want to. So on the scorecard, the bank account, there's the cash going in there every month that you do. My experience of this is get good at one channel and mm -hmm. stay in the channel until you're consistent and above expectation on your revenue. Most people dilute themselves before they get to those two things. So if Facebook's where you're winning right now, it might be that you can take your Facebook strategy and port it to LinkedIn and just go all in on LinkedIn. This would be a decision for you to make. I, I personally, for what you do as a coach, yes, you can prosper in Instagram. But I do think Instagram is a great place for personal branding. So maybe that's an additive thing. When you've got a VA, when you've got someone in social media who can start to proliferate your content, but only after you've got your revenue at expectation or above, or it's consistent monthly. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. 
And your model follows mine because my first business, and I think that's where we met when I was running my first business, which was really coaching entrepreneurs and really helping entrepreneurs go from zero, whether you call that to hero or just to get them some money. That was in Facebook, wholly in Facebook. In fact, 99% of my clients came from Facebook. Now I've shifted just one step closer to career employees and people who are on a mission with their careers. And so most of those people are on the LinkedIn platform. Mm-hmm. What you describe, yeah, you got to make a decision, I think, about LinkedIn or Facebook and just stick in and go all in on those on one of those platforms. Um, now, here's some data <laughs> that may make you make your mind up. LinkedIn decision-making is something like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Facebook decision-making is something like 12 hours, meaning mm-hmm. someone's got to see you 12 hours before they know, Tiffany's right for me, I'm going to go for it. But if they go on LinkedIn and they see you and they see one video, like my client yesterday was telling me, I saw your first video, that was it. We don't know what's connecting, but on LinkedIn, because the people have more available cash, you know, the mm-hmm. earnings is slightly higher. That's, by the way, this isn't our massive delta. People in Facebook have money. Believe me, they are the same employees looking at Facebook. But the cash, they're looking to spend with the coaches there. They're looking to spend with consultants, expert practitioners. They're looking to find business partners. That's all happening in LinkedIn. But the decision-making is faster. Mm. So you have to decide. Now, if you're just moving to LinkedIn, there will be a long tail, specifically if you're doing free and organic services. And we can talk a little bit about that about content because uh, I want I want to try to shift to that it's about what type of content do you do so let's talk so there's your decision on platform does that make sense mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Absolutely. Now, yeah and now let's talk about what type of content are you doing so tell me a little bit about the content you put out there what do you in, you know what really matters it's like going to the gym you're never going to stick to a workout routine if you don't enjoy it and yeah. you've already said you don't like the tech side of the role and building you know whether it's websites and email funnel you know email uh uh, pro, uh, what's the word? Why can't I say that? Yeah, yeah. Email sequences. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't like that stuff, yeah, it just makes sense to to hire. So go to Upwork or Fiverr and pay the five or seven or ten dollars an hour to get somebody to write your sequences for you. That that source is there. There are also some good people online, but they're going to be more expensive because they're they've been doing it a lot longer and they've, they've probably got a little bit more credibility. But you can find people to write documents for you. I use people in India, and, and it's something that people you can you can offshore this stuff to Philippines, India. I know Colombia is a good market. Venezuela is a great market. Costa Rica. These are things that you can do. Hey, everybody, we're right back, and we were just jumping into content there. Look, that's what happens. Kids walk in the room, right? We've seen this happen on TV, and we we laugh at some famous politicians. This may happen too, but in our lives, it's real. So this is uh, the struggle and the joy that we have. Joyful to see the kids. Sometimes it's a struggle to get the work done. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, t- I asked you, tell me a little bit about content, what content you do and what content you love to create. What do you love to do? Well, and see, that's the interesting thing is uh, I was a music major during COVID and I had to transition, but I was working with my university and I said, what can we do with the credits I already have? Because I did not want to start all over again. And so they put me into applied business. That means I'm going to get a business certificate, a finance certificate, and I got to pick what the third certificate was. So I picked social media marketing. So I'm pretty well versed in that and stay up to date with it. And I do really well with reels. I do really well with videos of me and my personality out on there, especially when I'm giving the positive energy that I'm able to give. But I also like to connect with people on a deeper level on some of more of those emotional things too, of just the struggle of life and and advice and wisdom that I've learned along the way or applying some of the high performance principles to those kind of things. And those do really well. And I'm really good at doing visuals, keeping it on my brand, those kind of things. And I love doing that part of it. I do enjoy creating those. Now I do feel as I've been working with um, Boss Babe and some other people, there are some things that I need to pay more attention to, like my hook, my call to action, thinking about that customer journey along the way, instead of just telling a fun story or doing something visually stunning. I think Brendan put it once, oh, wow, look, she's got stuff moving and blah, blah, blah. But do you have clients? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I felt like he was talking right to me. It's like, yeah, I've got some great content out there and I look forward to people discovering it and finding it as I get more out there. But did it meet the expectation I had for it? Did it really impact in the way that I meant for it to? Did it encourage someone to come along the rest of the journey with me? And that's where I feel I need to go more with my content now. So... <laughs> Perfect. And I like that you said that. Yeah. So, so our content resonates when we put a powerful opinion statement in first. And that can be a hook, just something that stops people. 
So in a powerful opinion statement in your world will be something about struggle and joy of being a single mother. Yeah. Something about myths of being a single mother. You know, there's this myth of you can't be a single mother and be a successful entrepreneur. Yet there are a load of them that we can model from. So we can even say, ask a question and, and model a post on something that, of someone who's our role model, somebody we are aspiring to emulate some of the activities they've done. So you can think of a female single mother and write a post about that and celebrate that and then share with people, hey, th this is, if you would like to learn more about this thing, then you can comment down below or share your thoughts down below. But the, the goal is to make sure that our thought leadership content isn't what we're relying on for monetization. Mm. Monetization comes from two or three other channels before thought leadership. Now, so thought leadership content like this, and I see your Instagram reels and posts, and I watch some of that content, that is all thought leadership. It's the most sustainable, but it's the slowest way to make money. Mm. So time, I, I think about it this way. Some of your videos, if Oprah Winfrey was saying the content, millions of people would like it. But that's because that's Oprah. She's got the brand. She's got the access to the multi-million right. people who are following her eyes on message. So, and we can see this because we can go to those Instagram profiles of the, the you know the titans of their industry, and we can see when they post, tens of thousands, if not millions, of people click the like. Oh yeah. But it's got nothing to do mostly with about the message. So we have to be careful. So um, one of the things, most things I struggle with is, you know, I'm single white male and there's a lot of single white males talking to camera. You're, you're single white female. There's a lot of single white females talking to camera. So you get lost in the sea when yeah. you're just doing content that looks like everybody else's content. So that opinion statement has to be powerful and it's got to be in some of the content. But there are three faster ways to monetize. Um, and we'll talk about that. So I'm going to share those with you now. Then you and I are going to jump off the recording and I'm going to teach you a bit more. <laughs> so look, for, for people watching and to get this to you, Tiffany, live is the fastest way still to monetize your coaching business is client outreach. I'm mm. not talking necessarily about cold messaging. I am talking about putting together a list of 20 people who you would love to coach. And not having, a, not having a rule in there that well, like, they would never want to coach with me. You don't know until you ask. And you also don't know that if you do ask that person, they may know somebody who they can send to you. So my first advice to you is, in client outreach, is find 20 people who love you already <laughs> and just ask them if you can coach them, free, paid, or otherwise. And, and, or, or are they looking just to go through their content? Now, there's a way of messaging this. I want you to go with value first, which is, hey, I've got two or three big ideas. Would you like to hear them? And you're going to share those big ideas and then have a call like the one we're having right now and just decide, is this something that they would like to do with you, free or paid or otherwise? You'll, I mean, you'll decide what risk you're going to take on some of the conversations. But that's the way to do it on the warm side of things. On the cold side of things, you can do the same thing. You can make a list of 20 people you would love to coach who you have never spoken to before. And this is the bit we get, really? <laughs> you have to reach out to that person? Yes, reach out to that person. And you want people who've got accessible funds. So yeah. you do want to reach out to people on this list who can't pay you. And, and we do that with some of our content. We attract people who don't have any money. Yeah, that's and true. That means they, yes, they need a life. If they're 50, by the way, they need a life coach. But if they're less than 50, 40, 30, 20 years old, they just need a financial coach to learn how to manage money. And that might not be you or me. We don't do that. In fact, I know a few good financial coaches. So we send them to the financial coach. You know, they can go to the bank and get a financial coach, but the best place to go is to go and find somebody independent who's going to support them for a long time and teach them management of money so that the scorecard tells a good story. Yeah. And they can invest in you. But your list should include people who can pay you mm -hmm. for not just one month, preferably three months minimum, but ideally 12 months. Because of the kind of work you and I do, it doesn't happen like this. Yes. People need to invest three, six, 12 months of their, their lives in creation of the new habits and the practices and the behaviors that's going to change the way their outcomes happen for them. And so that's why client outreach is still the fastest way. So it's the fastest way to do this. Now, there are two other ways to do it, but I'm going to bundle them together today for speed, video, interview, and I see you doing this, you interview other people, interview people who are going to be a client or are going to be a partner to get you clients. 
Yeah. Find, find another single white female coach <laughs> and interview her in your channel. And there's only one thing you need to say in the interview. This is what I do. I coach 30 something, 60 something single white females who are looking to be entrepreneurs, drive their career and get unblocked around maybe some labeling or some identity they've got with divorce, with you know, manage, struggling with the juggling. <laughs> you kind of talk about that in the session. And then you have your people who are prospective clients. You just interview people who would be your prospective clients. So you look at your 20 list and you invite them onto a conversation just like this one and you interview them. And then you show people doing your coaching, coach them live, like I'm coaching you right now. <laughs> show yeah. them how to do this. This is what we're doing. So I, I don't know if we'll work together and there'll be a commercial arrangement. I don't know if we'll partner together. I don't know what will happen from this, but this is the, the live coaching to teach you how to do this. And so all of that comes before the content. Fastest way, client outreach, talk to people, build relationship, build relationship, deliver value, build relationship, deliver value. What I'm seeing in some of the long tail now is it takes somewhere between three and six months when you've met someone for them to buy. Mm. But just like I didn't give Brendan a single penny for 10 years, and then I gave him tens of thousands of dollars to level up my life, like you've done as well. <laughs> you told me, <laughs> if you're a CHPC, I know you gave him tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> but it made a difference. But you followed him a long time before you did that. Mm -hmm. Following you a long time. That's why thought leadership works, because people are going to follow you and join your fan club. And when they're ready, they will come. Yeah. But that's the slowest way, but it is the most sustainable to keep building your audience over time. And then you'll find clients come from that. And so I've just had this experience. Some of the clients I'm working with right now, I've known them five years, seven years, some 10 years. Who oh. are now new clients of mine. They did not know that I could do this for them. But because I did client outreach, when they came and liked on a post, then I can go and have a conversation with them, deliver them two or three things of value help them maybe with a resume, help them with a job interview, introduce them to somebody, whatever the value is, just to give them something without expectation, because most of the time, nothing's going to come back. We don't want to be transactional. We want to be delivering value and service, service, service. These are the fastest ways to monetize. And now you and I are going to go off and have a nitty gritty conversation now off this camera. But if any of that resonated with the people watching, or you thought Tiffany was awesome and you want to coach with her, then you need to reach out. So what we'll do is underneath this video where we've posted it, there will be contact information for you to contact either of us and we will help you get to the next level. So thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you real soon.